Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm doing an update video to the 250 mini quad that I built previously on the channel. So I've been flying it around for a couple of weeks now and I have made a couple of additional changes. Now don't worry if you followed the build video exactly it's going to fly fine. Some of these changes I made because I was forced to and that is the first one that I'm going to talk about. So the first thing that I had to change was the USB connector on the KISS flight controller. It is known to fail and I really wasn't rough with this at all and I knew that they failed. Some people were putting epoxy glue on and I will be doing that on the next KISS flight controller that I use But since then I believe they have released a newer version that has a stronger USB connector But unfortunately this one took all the solder pads with it So what I have had to do is on the TX and RX and the voltage and ground pins on the flight controller I have soldered these pins here so that I can plug in this servo connector here and this is connected to an FTDI adapter. Now it's not a perfect solution at all and it's really annoying but it works and it saves me taking all this off and replacing it with another KISS flight controller that may fail again. So. I've pretty much got all my settings perfect now, so I don't really need this, but anytime I need to change something, I need to plug this into here. So I will plug this in and show you the connectors. So we have the RX pin here going to the TX pin on the flight controller, and the TX pin to the RX pin at the top here. And then this one is the voltage pin, and that goes underneath here on this side. And then the ground goes underneath next to that one. So just another thing that I changed up was the Xiaomi Yi mount. Again, this was a forced change. I thought I would try a different mounting system just because I could. I had a crash with it and it also snapped the camera plate here as well. So what I decided to do was find a more sturdy Xiaomi Yi mount for a couple of reasons really. I noticed that when I was flying in winds, the flexible mount that I had on here wobbled a little bit and it looked like the flight controller wasn't tuned correctly but I was getting a perfect view out of here and a slightly wobbly view out of here. Now it wasn't a problem in calm weather but it's never calm here. So what I did was I fixed this straight to the top of here but then I was finding I was getting jello on the Xiaomi Yi. So I decided to use the vibration mounting plate that comes with the ZMR250 but this is quite loose so I was worried that this would come off in sort of a high roll maneuver. So what I did was just underneath there you can see it's quite loose I have added a cable tie so that it doesn't transfer the vibration through to the mount it's nice and loose but if any of these come off then hopefully it should retain the camera in a crash. So what I did with this was I found a 3D printing service. So I got this and this off Thingiverse and I will overlay that over the top and put a link in the description of it. And I went onto a website then called 3D Hubs. So you download the files off Thingiverse for these components and then you select someone who is close to you who can print these off. It's a great website and a great way of printing stuff off when you don't have a 3D printer. And these are working absolutely perfectly. There is no jello on this whatsoever, even on full throttle in full daylight, which is great because I I didn't want to use my expensive GoPro black on the front of here, which didn't have any jello at all, but it's a 400 pound camera and I really didn't want that on the front of there when I can get a 50 pound camera and get similar results out of it. So it does add a little bit of extra weight, but it's not really a problem at all. And this is just working perfect. This is my favorite setup. Now, I also mounted this 
a different way so that I can get more angle on the camera. So if you look at that now, I can get crazy angle. But it does catch at the bottom there, so the camera doesn't go completely flat. It's a bit of a compromise. If you turn it the other way around, the camera goes completely straight, but then it doesn't lift up so much. So you can see there that both cameras are at about the same angle. So that's something else that I did. Of course, if you want the camera to go flat there, you can twist this the other way around and then the camera will go flat but you can see there because I'm using the diatone printed circuit board here those wires get in the way and it won't go any further than that but that is a compromise that I have taken another thing that I did was I have cable tied the PMP50 around the KISS flight controller just so that it doesn't move about. I was worried about the wires coming loose from sort of this moving around so I have kept that in place with the cable tie and that seems to be doing fine. Something else that I have changed is this here. This is a Palulu 5 volt regulator and it sits between the power distribution board and the KISS flight controller. And the reason why I put it in is I noticed that when the battery is getting to the end of its flight, when I punched the throttle, I was getting brownouts. And um, what a brownout is, is where there's not enough current and voltage going through to the receiver and it sort of resets itself for a very short time and you lose control which is quite worrying now it does do it towards the end of the flight but just for an extra bit of security I wanted to make sure that I wasn't getting any brown out so that I can punch the throttle as much as I like so as I mentioned this is a 5 volt regulator and I've put a clear heat shrink over the top there. Now this accepts from 2.9 volts to 32 volts input and it converts it to a 5 volt input. So even if the battery gets ridiculously low to the point where it can't even function for the ESCs and motors it will still power the flight controller and the receiver. Now I mentioned this flight controller here does have a voltage regulator on it but it's only a step down regulator I believe. This is a step down and step up regulator. So, so far I have not had any brownout so that has fixed the issue. So there you go, that is all of the changes that I have made to the ZMR 250. It is flying so good, I'm having so much fun with it. As you may have seen, I have posted quite a few videos flying with it and definitely look out for more videos as I push it even further. Thanks so much for watching, please continue to subscribe, cheers.